Hello students, this lesson is on the trig function graphs. We will begin with the sine function. Fill in the missing entries of the table and then plot the graph. Also give the period, amplitude, domain, and range. Now we'll fill in this table of points. The x-coordinates are to be interpreted as angles and the y-coordinate will be interpreted as the sine at that angle. Let's begin with a review of the unit circle degrees versus radians and how to find sine and cosine using the unit circle. Here we have a unit circle, which is a circle whose radius is one. And we'll let this angle alpha rotate counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. The orange will be measured in degrees and the green will be measured in radians. As we rotate, eventually we get to a point where we've achieved one radian of an angle, which is about 57.29578 degrees. This angle is an angle that corresponds to the result when one radius length is wrapped around the circle. Now this circle has a radius of one unit, so if we wrap around the circle a length of one unit, it would take us this far right here, and we call that one radian. It's not quite 60 degrees. As we continue to rotate, we will eventually get to two radians, and then again to three radians, etc. So this position corresponds to a rotation of one to three radius lengths around the circle. And notice three radius lengths around the circle doesn't quite go halfway around the circle. In fact, we have to go pi or 3.14 radius lengths to wrap halfway around the circle. Here's four radians, five radians, six radians, and by the time we get all the way around the circle, it turns out it takes two pi, which is about 6.283 radius lengths to go all the way around the circle. Now let's reveal some common angles as you rotate around the circle. These are the same angles you find in the unit circle. 30 degrees corresponds to pi sixth radians. Keep in mind 30 degrees is 1 sixth of 180 degrees, therefore it is 1 sixth of pi radians. Further recall that if I pause at an angle such as 47 degrees, or approximately 0.82 radians, the point on the circle reveals two coordinates, which are the cosine and the sine, of this angle, respectively. So the first coordinate you see here, 0.682, is the cosine of 47 degrees, and the second coordinate, 0.73135, is the sine of 47 degrees. If we want to rotate to a common angle, such as 30 degrees, we get that the cosine is about 0.86603, and the sine is exactly 1 half, or 0.5. Now this program I'm using does not always give exact answers for cosine and sine at different angles, but at the common angles, we can find exact answers by using the unit circle. So let's begin to fill in this table. When x is 0, so when the angle is 0, we look to the right of the unit circle, and the sine of that angle will be the second coordinate, which is 0. So we say that the sine of 0 is 0. At the next angle, pi sixth, which is 30 degrees, and in radians, in decimal form, pi six is approximately 0.524 radians. So it corresponds to a little more than a half of a radius length rotated around the circle. Looking at the unit circle, we focus on pi 6 radians, and we look at the second coordinate, so the sine of pi 6 is 1 half. Moving forward, I'll just put the result in my table. Pi 4 corresponds to 45 degrees, and it's about 0.785 radians. Pi 4 is here, sine is the second coordinate, so rad 2 over 2. This is an exact representation of the sine of this angle, and it's about 0.707. Pi thirds is about 1.047 radians. It also corresponds to 60 degrees. And the sine of pi thirds, look to the angle pi thirds, look to the second coordinate, radical 3 over 2, which is approximately 0 0.866. Pi halves corresponds to 90 degrees, so that's a quarter rotation around the circle. In decimal form, that's about 1.571 radians. So a little more than one and a half radius lengths rotated around the circle will get you to a quarter rotation around the circle. And the sine of pi halves, find pi halves in the unit circle, sine is the second coordinate, exactly one. That's the most that the sine will ever be because that's the highest point on this unit circle. By the time we get to pi, that corresponds to 180 degrees, and pi we know is about 3.142. And the sine of pi, find pi in the unit circle, it's the left side of the unit circle, second coordinate is zero, so the sine of pi is zero. Three pi halves is pointing straight down in the unit circle, right here, second coordinate is negative one. This is the lowest that the sine will ever be because it's the lowest point on the unit circle. And three pi halves is about 4.712 in decimal form. And finally, two pi is back pointing to the right 
the sine of 2 pi is the same thing as the sine of 0, and it's 0, and 2 pi is about 6.283. Now you notice in this table, we did not use any angles here in the second quadrant, nor here in the third quadrant, nor here in the fourth quadrant, but we could have and simply plotted more data points. But using the data points that we have, keep in mind we're interpreting the x-coordinate as an angle and the y-coordinate as the sine of that angle. When the angle is 0, so is the sine, and we have the point 0, 0. By the time the angle is increased to pi sixths, or approximately 0.524 radians, that the sine will have increased to 1 half. So we get the point pi sixth comma 1 half. By the time the angle increases to pi fourths, now pi fourths is halfway between 0 and pi halves. That puts us at an unmarked location right here, and when the angle is pi fourths, the sine of that will be rad 2 over 2, which is about 0 0.707. Now keep in mind this vertical scale, each horizontal gray line is 0.2 units, which is why 0 0.707 is about that height. And then the angle increases to pi thirds, at which point the sine becomes about 0.866. And by the time we get to an angle of pi halves, the sine is an increase to its maximum of 1. Now as the angle increased from 0 to pi halves, as we rotated around the circle, the y coordinates went from 0 up to 1. So we expect an increase that levels off as we get closer to the peak. The other points of data from our table correspond to angle pi at which the sine is 0, angle 3 pi halves at which the sine is negative 1, and angle 2 pi at which the sine is 0. Now if I had included more data points from the other quadrants, you would have seen a pattern that produces a shape such as, and this creates a graph of the y equals sine of x function, or using function notation we can say f of x equals sine of x, as x varies from 0 to 2 pi. And the interpretation of x is that it's the angle. Now what happens when x goes more than 2 pi, or when x is negative? As x goes past 2 pi, we continue just to rotate around the circle. So we expect all the same values of sine to be repeated. So this wave will actually continue and repeat exactly what you see here for every interval of 2 pi. Same thing going backwards. Let's examine what's going on here. Here's a unit circle again. This time I'm only going to measure my angles in radians. Here's an angle that's one radian, meaning we've gone one radius length around the circle to here. Here are the coordinates at that angle. The second coordinate is what you want to focus on because that is the sine of the angle. Down below I have an axis that represents the different angles measured in increments of pi fourths. So pi fourths, another pi fourths takes us to pi halves, then to three pi fourths, then to pi. So that corresponds to half the rotation around the circle. And by the time we get to 2 pi, we've done the second half of the rotation. Here the whole number breaks. So 1 radian is a little bit past pi fourths. 2 radians, 3 radians, which is just short of pi, which is about 3.14 radians. 4 radians, 5 radians, 6 radians, and then a little extra to get to 2 pi, which is about 6.28 radians. Now I'm revealing the graph of the sine function. So the second coordinate, 0.84, corresponds to this green height. That green height in this graph is the same. We still use the 0.84, but as the first coordinate, we use the angle at which we are. So from this picture, there are three numerical values that are relevant to the location of this point. One is the angle at which we are. One is the x coordinate of this point, meaning that how far from the origin to the right do we go? And the other is the y coordinate of this point, which is how far up or down do we go to get to that point? And of these three numerical data points, we're going to take two of them and make a new point. We're going to take theta and call it my new x down here. And we're going to take the second coordinate, which is a y coordinate in this graph, and also use it as a y coordinate in this graph. Now observe what happens as we continue to rotate. If I pause here when theta is 2.68 radians, the second coordinate is about 0.45. That's the sine of 2.68 radians. And taking the angle measurement as the first coordinate and the sine as the second coordinate, we get this point here. Continuing to rotate, pausing here. This time we have negative y coordinates because we're in the third quadrant. When the angle is 3.95 radians, the sine of this angle is negative 0.72. Again, we ignore the first coordinate we take this number as the x-coordinate and this number as the y-coordinate and make a new point that we see over here in this graph. 
The fact that this line segment is in red is simply indicating that we have a negative value. Continuing to rotate. I'll play this again and pay attention how the data from this graph is being used to produce this graph down here as a separate graph. Observe that the sign gets to its highest value when the angle is pi halves exactly, which is about 1.57 radians. As we rotate to angle pi, the sign is zero because the angle pi is the left side of the unit circle. That's height zero. As you rotate closer to three pi halves, that corresponds to 270 degrees or pointing down at the bottom of the unit circle whose height is negative one and that's as low as we will go. And then as we rotate to two pi, we get back to a height of zero. Notice down here we're saying f of theta equals sine theta. Well, theta in this position is the input variable and it is a dummy variable, meaning you can really use any letter. So you could change this theta to x and this theta to x and say f of x equals sine of x. And it would produce the same graph, assuming that this horizontal axis represents that independent variable. Now, as we rotate past 2 pi, and if we do negative rotations and corresponding to negative angles, this wave will continue to repeat itself. And we get what's called the sine wave. Now, this portion of the sine wave just continues to repeat itself. And horizontally, this window has a length of 2 pi units. In fact, any point you pick on the sine wave, such as here, you would need to draw this much of the sine wave to complete one cycle. Again, that's a horizontal distance of 2 pi. From low point to next low point, again, a distance of 2 pi. Here's another portion of the sine wave that just repeats itself. Again, a horizontal distance of 2 pi. So we see that the sine wave is periodic, meaning it just repeats itself, and that the period is 2 pi, which means you need a horizontal distance of 2 pi units to complete one cycle. So in our notes, we say the period is 2 pi. Now the amplitude is a feature of the sine wave. The amplitude is the maximum displacement from the midline. The midline in this case is the x-axis. And the sine wave goes equally far above as below, meaning the maximum displacement vertically happens here and it's a length of one unit. The maximum displacement vertically but in the negative direction is right here and again it's one unit. So in other words, the sine wave oscillates between a height of negative one and a height of positive one, but we say that the amplitude is one. Now the domain of this function, the sine wave goes forever left and right. Any angle can be used as the input. Negative angles make sense, and angles more than 360 make sense. You just continue to rotate around the circle, either clockwise or counterclockwise. So because x, which is the input variable, can be any angle, positive, negative, zero, we will say the domain is all real numbers. This bold R stands for all real numbers, or you can write it in an interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. And furthermore, we can specify that the domain is referring to the x coordinate in this case, and this symbol here means is an element of. So this reads, the domain is all x such that x is an element of the real numbers. What is important is that we are interpreting x as an angle measurement measured in radians, not in degrees. The range is the range of outputs of this function, it's the lowest y-coordinate up to the highest y-coordinate. So we say y is an element of, and then an interval notation from negative one up to positive one, using brackets to imply their inclusion. Or you can also say that y has to be greater or equal to negative one, but less than or equal to one. Okay, now let's look at the cosine function. Fill in the missing entries of the table and then plot the graph. Also give the period, amplitude, domain, and range. Once again, I will bring in the unit circle to help complete this table. Again, we are assuming that x will take on the role of angle, and our goal is to find the cosine of x and treat that as a y-coordinate. So when x is 0, we look for the angle 0. This is the right side of the unit circle, and it is the first coordinate there that will be the cosine of that angle. And the cosine of 0 is 1. Next, we shift to the angle pi 6, or 30 degrees, and the first coordinate, rad 3 over 2, is our cosine which is about 0.866. And now we go to angle pi fourths, radians, or 45 degrees. First coordinate is cosine, rad 2 over 2, which is about 0.707. Then we go to angle pi thirds, radians, or 60 degrees, and the cosine is 1 half. Pi halves, radians, cosine is 0. We'll skip the second quadrant data and go to pi radians. The cosine is negative 1. 
skip down to 3 pi halves, cosine is 0, and skip over to 2 pi radians, which is, and the cosine is back to 1. All right, plotting this data, x is the angle and y is the cosine of that angle, so we get 0, 1 as our starting point. Now when the angle is pi 6, the cosine will be rad 3 over 2, which is about 0.866. Pi force is this location, and when the angle is pi force, the cosine will be 0 0.707. When the angle is pi thirds, the cosine will be 1 half, and by the time we get to pi halves, the cosine is shrunk to zero. We get a curve, it looks like this. Now the other data from our table, if we had put more data from the second, third, and fourth quadrants into our table, we would get these points, and then the rest of the curve. Now as x goes negative, or x goes higher than 2 pi, this curve will just continue. Let's take a look at the cosine wave using technology. Here, once again, we have a unit circle. I've parked the angle at 0.8 radians. The first coordinate is 0.7, that's the cosine. And this time we're only interested in the angle and the cosine, so I don't need this second coordinate, 0.72. Now this 0.7 is the distance from the y-axis to the point. So I'm gonna reveal the cosine graph. This green length, which is 0.7, is now going to become a y-coordinate in this new graph down here. So of the three numerical values relevant to this location, we're going to use the theta, the angle, as our input coordinate, and we're going to use this first coordinate, 0.7, as our output coordinate, and we're going to make this point 0.8 radians, and cosine of that angle is 0.7. If I move this radian to a different location, such as 1.1 radians, and we make a point out of 1.1 and 0.45, again, we ignore the 0.89. So we have 1.1 comma, 0.45, we have this location. You'll see this green x here, that's simply referring to the fact that in this image up here, this length is an x-coordinate. And we're simply turning that x-coordinate and reorienting it vertically. So this is the x-coordinate from this image, but in this image, we're now interpreting that as a y-coordinate or a vertical coordinate. Now drag the angle back to zero and then hit play. And then for angles that go past 2 pi, we just continue to rotate around the same circle. So we expect to get the same values of cosine being repeated. And that's also true for negative angles where we rotate clockwise. And so the entire cosine wave gets revealed. Just like the sine wave, the cosine wave repeats itself over and over again forever in both directions of x. Similar to the sine wave, the period is 2 pi. If you start at the peak and follow one cycle, by the time you get back to a peak again, We've covered a horizontal distance from 0 to 2 pi, so the period of the cosine wave is also 2 pi. The domain will be negative infinity to infinity, and the range, the outputs of the cosine wave, will be from a low of negative 1 up to a maximum height of positive 1, both included. So the period is 2 pi, the domain is x must be an element of the real numbers, and the range is that y must be an element of the interval from negative 1 to 1, inclusive. The amplitude is again the max displacement from the midline. And we go as much as one unit above and one unit below. So our amplitude is one. When you look at both graphs put together, you can see that they are just horizontal shifts of each other. The red graph is y equals sine of x, and the blue graph is y equals cosine of x. It starts at a peak on the y-axis, and again, over a period of 2 pi, completes one cycle. If you take the red graph and shift it left pi halves, it'll become the blue graph. So sine and cosine are horizontal shifts of each other. Okay, let's move on to the next trig function. The tangent function. Fill in the missing entries of the table and then plot the graph. Also give the period, domain, and range. Once again, x is an angle and y will be the tangent of x. I'll bring in the unit circle. Now it's important to remember that the tangent of x can be found by dividing sine of x by cosine of x. For example, the tangent of 0 will be the sine of 0 divided by the cosine of 0. So look to angle 0. The sine is the second coordinate, and the cosine is the first coordinate. So we get 0 over 1, which is just 0. Now let's look at pi 6. The tangent of pi 6 is equal to the sine of pi 6 divided by the cosine of pi 6. The sine is 1 half, and the cosine is rad 3 over 2. So we get 1 half divided by rad 3 over 2. And then we will invert and multiply. So this is 1 half, and multiply instead by the reciprocal, which is 2 over rad 3 and that gives us 1 over rad 3. This is a good simplified version, or you can rationalize it by multiplying top and bottom by rad 3, and that gives us rad 3 over 3. So either of these two final answers here are acceptable. I'll just write 1 over rad 3, shifting to pi force, 
tangent pi fourths equals sine pi fourths over cosine pi fourths. So we get rad 2 over 2 over rad 2 over 2. And since those are the same value, this will simplify to 1. Shifting to pi thirds, the sine of pi thirds is rad 3 over 2 divided by the cosine of pi thirds, which is 1 half. So we get this fraction here. This will simplify to just rad 3. Shifting to pi halves, we do the sine of pi halves 1 divided by the cosine of pi halves 0. And this is problematic because you can't divide by 0. We get does not exist, or D and E for short. So the tangent will be undefined every time that the cosine is zero. So that's when the first coordinate on the unit circle is zero. Well, that occurs at the top point and at the bottom point. And these will be the only two positions at which tangent will be undefined. So the angles pi halves and three pi halves, and also at any angle that is coterminal with these positions. Now at position pi, sine of pi is zero, cosine of pi is negative one. Zero divided by negative one is okay, that is just zero. And by the time we get back to two pi, Again, we'll have 0 divided by 1, which again is just 0. If I decimalize two of my answers here, we get these results. And let's talk about the domain. The tangent of x is undefined for any value x, where x is an angle corresponding to this position or this position. So our domain will be x cannot be pi halves. And if we add pi to that, that takes us to 3 pi halves. So it can't be pi halves plus pi either. If we add 2 pi, we'll rotate back to the same code terminal position. So it can't be pi halves plus 2 pi. In fact, if I keep adding pi, we'll just wind up at either the top or the bottom of the unit circle, which are positions where the tangent is undefined. So pi halves plus 3 pi, etc. Also, I can't rotate clockwise by pi. So I also can't do pi halves minus pi or pi halves minus 2 pi, etc. So we can summarize all of these different positions with pi halves, 3 pi halves, and all of their coterminal angles by saying that x cannot be pi halves plus n pi, where n is an integer. This bold z stands for integers. And the integers are all the counting numbers and their negatives and zero. So dot, 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 negative 3, comma, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And this is a general way to describe all of these angles Turns out that the tangent will have a vertical asymptote at all such angles. So on our graph, we'll have a vertical asymptote here at pi halves, another one over here at three pi halves, and then going backwards pi to negative pi halves, backwards pi again to negative three pi halves. So we have an asymptote in this position and then moving forward by pi any amount and moving backward by pi any amount. Creates infinitely many asymptotes. The data in our table I can plot, zero, zero. Pi fourths is here. Pi six is to the left of it. Pi thirds is to the right of it. Here's height one. And we have this data so far. If we had plotted more data, we would wind up seeing a path between negative pi halves and pi halves that is something like this. And this will repeat between every set of vertical asymptotes. The graph repeats itself every pi units because one instance of this repeated graph occurs on an interval of x-coordinates that's pi units long. And the range will be negative infinity to infinity because each portion of this tangent graph We'll follow an asymptote down, and we'll follow an asymptote up. So all y-coordinates will be possible. Now let's look at the graph using technology. Currently we are seeing the graphs of sine and cosine. The graph of y equals sine of x begins at the origin and completes one period or one cycle by the time we get back to 2 pi, whereas the graph of cosine, which is blue, begins at the point 0, 1, which is the peak of a curve, and it also completes one cycle by the time we get to 2 pi. Now the graph of tangent will be undefined everywhere where the cosine graph is zero because tangent is sine divided by cosine and we cannot divide by zero. So every x-intercept of the blue wave will correspond to a vertical asymptote for the tangent graph. Here are all those asymptotes. And then the tangent graph will have an x-intercept precisely where the red graph has an x-intercept. And then here's the tangent. One key point on this graph is the point pi fourths comma one. By symmetry, if we go negative pi force, we'll go down to negative 1. Okay, let's move to the next function, the cotangent function. The same instructions, let's bring in the unit circle. Keep in mind that the cotangent of x is equal to the reciprocal of tangent, and since tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent will be cosine over sine. So the cotangent of 0 will be the cosine of 0 over the sine of 0. 0 is over here, the cosine is 1, and the sine is 0. So this will give us 1 over 0, which is undefined. D and E for does not exist.
at pi 6. The cotangent of pi 6 is cosine pi 6 over sine pi 6. Well, the cosine of pi 6 is rad 3 over 2, and the sine of pi 6 is 1 half. Invert and multiply, and we simply get rad 3. If we continue this, we'll get the following entries. Now, because cotangent is cosine over sine, cotangent will be undefined wherever sine is 0, because you cannot divide by 0. And that occurs on the right and left sides of the unit circle. So our domain will be that x, our angle, cannot be 0. It cannot be 0 plus pi. It cannot be 0 plus 2 pi. It cannot be 0 plus 3 pi, etc. Nor can it be 0 minus pi, 0 minus 2 pi, or negative 3 pi, etc. These are all of the angles that are coterminal with the right and left sides of the unit circle. We can summarize this by saying x cannot be any integer multiple of pi. Again, where n is an integer. That bold z stands for all the counting numbers, 0 and the negative counting numbers. This is simply saying you cannot be at any angle that is coterminal with the right or left sides of the unit circle. So this function will have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, which is the y-axis, and go to the right by pi, go to the right by pi again, go from 0 left pi, and go left pi again. All integer multiples of pi will be the location of a vertical asymptote. Now the data that we do have in our table, and if we plot more data between 0 and pi, we will see a curve that looks like, and this curve will be repeated between every pair of asymptotes. The period of this is also pi, because the repetition occurs over an x interval of pi units long, and the range will be negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers. Using technology looking at a graph where the red is the sine wave and the blue is the cosine wave, the cotangent will be undefined wherever the sine is zero, which means wherever the red wave has an x-intercept. That gives all these locations. And then the cotangent will have an x-intercept wherever the blue curve has an x-intercept. And we wind up getting the following cotangent curve. Okay, let's go to the next function. Same instructions. Bring in the unit circle, and recall that the cosecant of x is the reciprocal of sine. So if I want to do the cosecant of 0, then I would do the reciprocal of the sine of 0. Now looking at 0, the sine is the second coordinate, which is also 0. So the cosecant of 0 is 1 over 0. This does not exist. In fact, the cosecant will be undefined wherever the sine is 0, which happens on the right and left sides of the unit circle. So again at pi, and also at 2 pi. Shifting to pi 6, the sine is 1 half. So we have 1 over 1 half, which really means 1 times 2 over 1, which is just 2. Now pi fourths, the sine is rad 2 over 2. So inverting that, we get 2 over rad 2, which can be simplified. You can either factor the numerator into rad 2 times itself, and then cancel some rad 2s, or you can rationalize by multiplying top and bottom by rad 2, giving 2 rad 2, and the rad 2 times rad 2 is just 2, and then the 2s cancel. So either approach, you wind up getting just rad 2 as a nice simplification. At pi thirds, we're simply going to reciprocate rad 3 over 2. We'll leave our answer like that. You can rationalize the denominator if you'd like. At pi halves, we're going to reciprocate 1, which will stay 1. And at 3 pi halves, we will find the reciprocal of negative 1, which is also still negative 1. So addressing the domain, the cosecant is undefined wherever the sine is 0. So that's on the right and left sides of the unit circle and any angles that are coterminal with those positions. So once again, we have x cannot be any integer multiple of pi. So all the asymptotes will be at these positions. Some of these outputs in decimal form are as follows. Plotting the data we do have, if we were to plot more points between 0 and pi, we would wind up seeing the following giving us a curve, plotting more data between pi and 2 pi, we would see similar data, but would all be negative. And then we would start to see repetition. Now the period in this case is going to be 2 pi again, because to complete one cycle, we need both the upper and the lower portions, which covers a horizontal distance of 2 pi units. And that pairing gets repeated, both moving forwards and moving backwards. Now for the range, this portion of the curve goes up forever and goes as low as one unit for the y coordinate, and this portion goes down forever, but as high as negative 1 for the y-coordinate. So y could be any result from positive 1 up to infinity, corresponding to this portion, or, and we use a union symbol, negative infinity up to negative 1 for that lower portion. The only y-coordinates not possible in this graph are those y-coordinates that are strictly between negative 1 and 1. All right, with technology, here we have a graph of the sine wave. The cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine wave. So everywhere the sine is 0, which is at its x-intercepts, we will expect cosecant to have a vertical asymptote. 
And then the graph of cosecant is as follows. Okay, let's move on now to the last function. Secant of x is the reciprocal of cosine. Bring in the unit circle. So the secant of zero will be one over the cosine of zero. And at zero, the cosine is one. So we get one over one, which is just one. So this will also be the answer when x is two pi. Let's jump over to when x is pi. The cosine is negative one and one over negative one is just negative one. Let's look at angle pi halves. The cosine of pi halves is zero and one over zero is undefined. This will also be what occurs at three pi halves. So the secant will be undefined wherever the cosine is zero, which is at the top and bottom positions of the unit circle, which corresponds to x values of pi halves plus n pi, where n is any integer. Looking at pi six, the cosine is rad three over two. So we do one over rad three over two, or it's reciprocal, and we get two over rad three. Looking at pi fourths, the cosine is rad two over two. Reciprocate that, we get two over rad two, which we saw earlier simplifies to just rad two. And looking at pi thirds, the cosine is one half. Reciprocate that, we get two. And some of these in decimal form are as follows. The asymptotes will occur at these positions, pi halves, and then go over by pi, go left by pi, left by pi, etc. forever in both directions. Plotting the data points from our table. Looking between negative pi halves and pi halves, more data will yield. Looking between pi halves and three pi halves, we will see the same shape but negative values. And then this pairing of shapes will repeat. The period will be two pi again, and the range will be the same range as for the cosecant function. That is every y coordinate one and above or negative one and below. Using technology, here's a graph of cosine of x. Wherever cosine of x has an x-intercept, in other words, where it has a value of zero, is where the secant, which is one over cosine, will be undefined, giving us these asymptotes. And then here's the graph of secant of x. All right, and that concludes this lesson.